this video, we're going to learn to make a kind of catapult called a mangonel. This kind of catapult is also called a traction trebuchet because it relies on traction or pulling to provide the power. I'm going to make this mangonel in a very simple way using lashings. So here are the materials that we are going to use. I have eight two by two pieces of lumber. Uh, these are eight foot long. We have a round piece of lumber that we're going to use for our fulcrum. And then I have various lengths of rope. Uh, I used about 100 feet, that is to say 30 meters of manila rope. And then we have some pulleys. And then I have some modern rope that I can use to pull through the pulleys to also make it more comfortable on the hands when we're pulling down. So the first thing you're going to want to do is to lash together three of your staves into a triangle. It can be an equilateral triangle or you can make uh, one side, the base side, a little bit shorter so that it stands up a little bit taller than it otherwise would. We're going to use a diagonal lashing on each of these corners because they're not going to be at right angles to each other. So in order to uh, show that up close, I'm going to uh, change the camera angle here a little bit and I'll we'll walk you through doing the diagonal lashing. Okay, so I'm going to use some more modern rope to demonstrate the lashings because it's easier to follow with the modern rope. And then I'll redo the lashing with the manila rope. So to start off a diagonal lashing, you're going to want to make what's called a timber hitch, which is basically you loop the rope around the other rope after you wrap them around the uh, two pieces, the outside of the two pieces. And then you just loop this one rope back on the other one. After you get your timber hitch, you can pull it tight. You pull against where you looped, make the timber hitch. And then you're gonna wrap around this way, diagonally, across your pieces three times. Then you can wrap the other way across the other diagonal. Once, twice, three times. So we've just wrapped this three times and now we're going to frap it. That is to say we're going to put rope in between the two staves. We're going to wrap it around in between twice. So we wrapped thrice, three times, and we're going to frap twice. So once we've accomplished that, all we need to do now is tie off the wrapping do that with a clove hitch. So to make a clove hitch, what you do is you wrap your cord around your stave, and then make an X and wrap it around again, and then you put the free end underneath the top cord of the X and above the bottom cord of the X, and that makes a very tight hitch once you pull it tight. And there you go. Okay, so this is what the completed uh, triangle looks like. We're now going to add two staves to either side that are going to provide the back support for our catapult. We will use square lashings because these uh, staves are going to be more or less at uh, right angles to the uh, other staves here. Um, you can use diagonal lashings here if you want to though. I'm going to demonstrate the square lashing from this angle, it's a bit easier to see. First thing I'm going to do is draw a clove hitch on here. And then we're going to put this one on top of this one. The square lashing is for pieces that cross more or less at 90 degrees to each other. So we will put it on like this. And we will put this one underneath here and put this one over here and then put it under here. Then we cross over once again and go under this one and over the next one just like that. And now we've crossed each piece three times. So now we're ready for our frappings. And frappings are where you wrap around your pieces in the middle. So I'm going to go over here in between the pieces, I should say. 
And I've wrapped it thrice, and I'm going to wrap it twice. Then you can make a clove hitch over here, bring it in tight, and there is your square lashings. And once you get this stave lashed, you can lash the other one to the other side. Try to get them about approximately the same length in front, so that way they're the same length behind. Okay, so once you get the two square lashings made, you're ready to go ahead and tilt the whole apparatus up. And now you can see how it's going to be supported. Uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to construct the arm. Uh, that's going to go up here. And we're also going to put one more support down here uh, so that we can uh, make sure that our uh, mangonel is stable. I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, base support on first. And normally we put the this base stave underneath uh, this cross brace right here. So I put it down there and now we're going to make a nice square lashing for it. Catapults of this type often used a sling apparatus at the end of the throwing arm. However, for simplicity, I'm going to use an ice cream bowl. I'm going to mount the bowl with a single screw, more or less at the end of the throwing arm. Okay, so now we're ready to lash the, what I've been calling the fulcrum here. That's this round piece. It needs to be round so that it can roll when we're uh, firing the uh, catapult. To our other stave here that I've already attached the bolt to. Um, we're going to use a, a square lashing for this. I recommend putting it about maybe a fourth of the way down on there. So you got some room up front here to give you a, a little bit of leverage there. Not too much you know, it's not make it too hard to pull. Um, and, but you can adjust that, it's, it's adjustable and it's uh, one of the things that needs to be considered when, when tuning your uh, trebuchet, if it, as it were. And then this goes in here. So that's the basic idea, now you can see how it's gonna work. Now we're gonna put two pulleys on it, which is a modern adaptation, just so I can uh, fire it with just one person or if I'm using somebody else, they can be well away from the device while they're pulling down. To do these pulleys, I'm just going to use a shorter length of rope and just attach them with a couple of clove hitches so that uh, the pulleys will stay in place. So to mount the pulleys on my stave, I just used two clove hitches. I first made one clove hitch in the usual way. And then I looped the pulley on the rope right here. And I made another clove hitch. There's another clove hitch over here. Okay, so as you can see, we have our two pulleys in place here. Now we'll use our modern rope. What we'll do is we'll just lead it through one side, up here, back down, pull it back. And once we get it even lengths in the back, as far as we want, then we'll tie it off up here with the uh, clove hitch. So now I have it going through both pulleys. I will pull the rope back here. Getting about as much length as I need back here. Sometimes, especially if this is being operated by younger people, you're going to have some rope so they can get well clear of the throwing arm. And I'm going to bring this up here. Okay, so this is more or less the completed mangonel. So now we're ready to try it out. This is set up. All right. Three, two, one, one!